Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hardcore Minecraft. I'm not gonna lie, when I pressed F5 the first time, it did throw me off a little bit. That my armor is different, but it's so shiny. I love it, I love it. Hello, Florence. How is everything at the library today? We all doing okay up here? Athena, holding the fort down, I see. Okay, okay. So, everyone, today I have a mission for us to start, and I think it is that we need to do a little bit of mining. So, this is my stone chest. I don't actually have that much stone. It's not a bad amount of stone. We could just do quite a lot better. Also, we need some gold. Um, granted, we have been leaving quite a lot in the nether. Thank you for reminding me about that, by the way. You can't actually smelt this. I kind of keep forgetting that you can actually smelt this. But you can, and it gives you a whole entire gold ingot, so that's definitely worth doing. Mainly though, I just want to head down to the mines today and see if I can get some stone, maybe some andesite, some different materials for beginning work on the rest of this castle. And mainly, the castle keep, because let's be honest, my house is, uh, is looking rough compared to the rest of the castle. I, I won't lie to you, it's <laughs> really, I should get on that, huh? It's fine though, as with most things in this world, good things will come in time. Now, let's head down. Oh, that is so dramatic, I kinda love it. <laughs> I keep thinking that I'm gonna put a water column here at some point, but I just, I, the jumping down is really fun, I'm not gonna lie. Climb up, not so fun, but uh, that's fine. Okay, I do think that I am going to be strip mining today. I don't normally strip mine. I've just been kind of going straight in a three by three to get stone, but today we'll change it up and we'll start with some strip mining. Because I'm strip mining and I'm not super at risk, I'm gonna go ahead and have torches in my offhand instead of my totem of undying. Hopefully I don't regret this. My main objectives are to stock up on coal, redstone, I mean diamonds would be great if I had them, but also some gold. Other than that, I don't really need much outside of stone. Oh, diamonds! <laughs> Perfect! Is it only one? Oh, no, no, no. It's at least two. Ah, yes! Four diamonds! Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. Okay, we have some lava here. Unfortunately, I did not remember to bring water, so love that for me. Um, let's just turn around. Okay, and now we start going the- oh. <laughs> I was gonna say we go the other way, but actually this is just a cave. <laughs> I swear. We'll continue going this way, actually. I really strongly dislike gravel. I just do. Mining this way is just so relaxing. You don't really have to worry about a lot. There's not much that can kill you, and I can just kind of sit back, eat a snack, listen to some music, and chill and mine. And it is really, really nice. Okay. That's fun. Um, let's turn around. Don't mind me, just constantly running out of coal while underground for absolutely no reason. Oh my gosh, the struggle. Alright, my inventory is starting to get a little bit full, so I'm gonna head back to the mean mining base now and send this up in the minecarts. This system is literally just the best ever. Oh, being able to send literally all of this into a minecart and it'll be all up there waiting when I finish mining. So good. 10 out of 10 recommend that to anybody making a long-term base like this. I'm actually really glad that we're collecting a bunch of granite by doing this as well. Very useful for the build upstairs. Oh, more diamonds. Heck yeah. Okay, how many we got this time? Two, three. Okay, <laughs> just three. That's fine. Three is better than none. Oop. Um, awkward. <laughs> it's fine. All under control. Totally, totally got it. It's fine. Let's just do that, please, and thank you. Okay, is there anything this way? Oh, this is exciting. Let me... Oh. Okay. Watch above my head. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, it's a mine shaft. This... Is this the mine shaft that's under my house, I wonder? It must be. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm collecting so much iron on this trip, which was not something I intended on doing, but wow, super useful. Okay, we got some gold. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, <laughs> hello. Ah, thorns. Rude. Cool. Respiration helmet. Ah, uh, no thank you. I can do the bow tricks too. Is that a spider with potion? Oh, of course it's a spider with potion effects. 
saying goodbye. Creeper. No creeping. I literally sent that creeper off into space. <laughs> Where'd it go? Uh, peekaboo. <laughs> Think that's about enough cave exploring for one day. Back to strip mining. Good old fashioned faithful strip mining. All right, time for a second trip back with a kind of full inventory. Could carry a little bit more, but I like to come back every now and then when I pop my head out of a mine, just to make sure that I send some upstairs. Oh, I left iron down here. What am I doing? <laughs> that's so silly. Okay, let me get some of this smelting as well. Now that that's going, let's get back to work down in the strip mine. Oh my gosh, more diamonds. Yes, this is actually so close to the regular just strip. Ah, yes, please. I haven't sent any of these up yet. So our total so far is 13 diamonds to fortune. Epic. All right, and that, my friends, was a 30 minute mining session. It condensed down to a couple of minutes and recording, but yeah, you know, that is how it goes. Ah, yes, the sound of sweet items being sorted. Oh, how I love it. Look at these busy, busy minecarts. This system is literally my favorite ever. This one is dropping off into this chest, into this hopper, which the other one comes along and picks up and drops off. And then it eventually files into these chests so neatly. <laughs> Wait, oh my gosh, we have 11 diamond ore in here. Bro, what? When did I get 11 <laughs> All right, cool, 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 cool. Didn't know that, that's fun. Oh, and I should definitely put back on my Totem of Undying. Okay, back into the village. Villagers, you'll never guess how many diamonds I got. Look at this, look at this, 24. Totally got them all just now and didn't just recently discover that I own some of these. Hello, you'll never, look, 24. I know, it's shocking. I feel like you don't care. Florence, Florence, guess what? Look, di okay, all right, cool. Yeah, diamonds, di okay, all right, it's cool. Look at this, you guys ready? You ready for the flex, you ready? Look at this, look at this, yeah, you're right. You're right, Athena, that's it, look at this. It's amazing, they don't care. They absolutely just do not care. <laughs> but hey, the village looks pretty cool from up here. Right, I've got my fortune three pickaxe. Let's pickaxe these diamonds and see what I get. Oh my goodness, this is so many. <laughs> We're rich, 56 diamonds, 56 diamonds. Pierre, 56 diamonds. Okay, it's cool. I, I didn't care either, it's fine. Okay, all in all, that is very impressive. Very happy that I did that. Look at all these diamonds. <laughs> Honestly, we don't really need diamonds at the minute too much, but it's cool to have the flex. Not that my villagers care about the flex, but it's fine. It's all good. It's a thankless job in this village. I know. It's fine. Oi! Who is taking damage? Ah. I actually for once have absolutely no idea how a villager took damage there. Do you know what? Speaking of villager damage, I actually have an idea completely unrelated to mining, but you know what? I'm just, I'm gonna derail the episode. I've decided we are getting distracted. Let's do it. So my lovely, amazing, super intelligent, never fall off anything villagers, um, really, really need some protection strategies in place. And I think that that is something we can sort of incorporate into this center area. I know a lot of you have been telling me that we can put armor on villagers. I agree with that, but we can also put potions on villagers. So when my villagers take damage, I could potentially set up an area in this meeting area, you know, where they all come here once a day, every single day, and I can heal them. I feel like that's a good idea, right? We can run with that. Let's run with that. We could do it. Hey, where's my Fletcher? Fletcher? Hello, Fletcher. Just need a couple of bows. Thank you very much for your business. Oh, are you upgrading? Oh, you are. <gasps> what are you going to sell me? Arrow of slowness. I actually kind of like that. That's a good shout, actually. We will probably buy that from you. Thank you. Pleasure doing business. 
Okay, so the villagers tend to meet around this bell. The bell is kind of off center right now, but I'm imagining the bell can eventually be around this tree. And maybe we can put a dispenser on either side of said bell and put the potions on the inside and then I'll have some sort of trigger. I'm not really sure if it should be triggered by the villagers stepping on a pressure plate or if it should be triggered by me, but either way, um, this is sort of what I'm imagining. Where is my cleric? Cleric, hello. Wait, you're not my cleric. He hello? You're not my cleric. Where's my other cleric? When did I hire you? Hello? No, 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 no. Go somewhere else, go, go get a job. This villager has decided it wants to be a farmer, so I'm, I'm re-rolling it. I really do wonder sometimes how I get anything done. Hello, is this your child? You are my cleric, I need you. Um, do you happen to sell? No, you don't, okay, it's fine. Pierre sells glycerin melons. Glycerin? Glycerin. Gl I had, whatever that word is. Melons, it sells melons. I'm gonna use these melons down in our secret layer to brew some more of these potions. I do find it a little silly that water bottles don't stack. Regardless though, let's get to brewing. Okay, we are gonna need gunpowder, but that is perfect, look at that. And then we can add that to make it healing too. Although to be honest, they don't really need to be um, healing too, but you know, it can be helpful. Perfect, okay, while these are running, I'm gonna go back upstairs and get started on the entire mechanism and central area. Oh, and I should probably put our lovely cleric's workstation back, hello. Still here, I see, are you stuck? I really hope you're not stuck. Yeah, here they are. So this is sort of how everybody meets. And at the minute they're meeting in a radius around this bell, but when I move this bell to the center, they should just meet all around this general area. So friends, I know we've been waiting a long time for this, but it is officially time to begin on the central oak slash willow tree that we're gonna have. I'm very, very excited for this moment. Gotta get some leaves, of course. We're going to need a lot of these. All right, villagers, now is the time. The tree is officially being built. I'm excited, I'm very, very excited. Oh, but first, we have to kind of clean up this entire area. Gonna take all of this off of it, and we're gonna take down this tree, taking everything with us, leaves included, to build into a brand new, beautiful tree. I'm gonna keep this original stump right there in place and we will build off of that. First though, I'm gonna change these logs to wood because it is a little bit easier to build with even though we lose some blocks. And I'm also gonna store away the potion stuff in here just to save on inventory space. Okay, now the moment we have all been waiting for, tree building time. I'm gonna start with a pretty basic trunk. I do want it to be a little thicker, but you know, not, not too crazy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's already so much more epic. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna use a bunch of leaves in different places to kind of get different effects and branches in various areas. Like one can go up this way maybe and over one and then we'll have a different branch maybe come off the main trunk over here. Building trees is always so challenging. You have to be able to jump literally everywhere. So far so good? Yeah, not not horrible. Not great, but not horrible. We definitely need some more wood. Let's go chop some trees. Gotta repopulate the forest, of course. All right, got some more wood, ready to start again. I think a key thing with this that I need to remember is I need to try and make it large and like important without kind of overwhelming this fairly small area. So I don't wanna do anything too crazy down here with the roots. I wanna try to knock this back a little tiny bit but still make it a thick, nice tree. I don't, it's a balancing act, I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure exactly where I'm at with this tree, but it kinda seems like from up here it's filling out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting there. It's definitely a lot more epic than it was before, but it has a long way to go. Something that I do wanna do though is just experiment with placing the bell inside the tree. I don't know if the villagers will be able to perfectly reach this, but I like the idea of them gathering all the way around the tree um, rather than just kind of in one area. I also want to destroy some of the cobble and put tree roots down in the ground like it's built into the cobbles. 
And of course, if there's tree roots down in the cobbles, it probably means that we're gonna be able to have some mossy cobblestone in around this area as well. Oh, we have some jobless villagers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, quick tree break because I've noticed that there are gonna be a couple of newborn villagers around here and we have some jobs that we haven't given out yet. So, um, distraction from the tree, sorry. One of those jobs is a fisherman with a barrel and the other is actually a loom. However, we only have one piece of string. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Why do I only have one piece of string? Uh, I don't know. Literally only one piece of string in this whole, how? How? You would think that having a literal mine shaft below your base would mean that you had better access to string. However, that is just not the case with me for some reason. Luckily for me, very easy quick trip. Okay, two string, perfect. Right, easy enough. I've made a loom and a barrel. Perfect. I'm not exactly sure where these villagers are gonna work. I imagine the fishermen all want working down around here somewhere. So I'm gonna place the barrel right here. Kinda hope that a villager finds it. Not really sure about the shepherd either, but we're not really using the basement of the tavern for much. So I figure for now we'll put the loom in here. Come on in, yeah, there's a job bench. Do you want it? Look at you, oh my gosh, the hat. <laughs> I was not expecting the hat, you're so cute. What the heck? Why are you so cute? <laughs> I actually love you. Oh my goodness. I wasn't mentally prepared for the shepherd to be that cute. What do you think? Oh, look at them gathering around the tree. <gasps> I loved that. And our fisherman, we have a fisherman. Hello, where did you go? Where do you sleep? Hello. Oh, you're adorable as well. 20 string, okay. <laughs> Kind of broke at the minute, but uh, very cool, very cool. Okay, so the next part of this building process is actually the leaves. And this is probably the hardest part, but the, the trick is you just want to have some shears on you, uh, probably several pairs of shears. And then, oh, no, 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 not like that. And like this with the shears in one hand, and then you just place a whole bunch, like spam them like crazy. And then you go in and you break them. See, you spam them down and then you break a couple of them. And as you're doing this, like placing and breaking and placing and breaking, you create these little air pockets in the tree and it looks a lot more realistic because trees in real life are kind of fluffy, right? They kind of look like they could have birds and squirrels and little critters crawling all around them. So we want to have lots and lots of air space all around this tree. What do you think, everyone? It's looking pretty cool, right? I mean, it's definitely not the willow tree that I originally imagined, but as I was going with this idea, I felt like doing more of a willow vibe would have dragged it down and kind of blocked the view a little bit, whereas an oak tree is a little more airy and kind of see-through, so it doesn't block the view as much like I was worried about. Also, absolutely loving the bell right in the middle because the villagers actually gather all around it. I do, however, want this to be sort of like a more powerful location. So I think that what I'm going to do to try to age this tree a little bit is add some different, maybe some vines, but also some oak wood fences to certain branches, just kind of coming off of it in areas to hopefully help with that effect. Just a couple in places like this will hopefully kind of make up for the fact that I didn't turn it into a willow. Yeah, I think I like that. That's very cute. Also, not sure if this is something that we would be into, but I grabbed some chains and some lanterns to see if I could find spots to maybe hang some of these lanterns. Yes, I like that. I really love the chains as well. Let's get one right here as well. The other thing that we really have to think about with a tree of this size is the fact that this is actually spawnable. Mind you, I just completely missed my, I'm good at parkour, it's fine. Um, so we're gonna place a couple of torches up here for now. Eventually we may go to shroom lights or something like that. But these shouldn't be super visible from the ground. It'll just hopefully stop zombies or anything from potentially spawning up here and ruining my day. All in all, I think this is a great improvement to the village center. It's so much more official now. I kind of want to experiment with actually removing these bushes here and opening it up a bit, but I'm not sure. Like, what would it look like if these just weren't here? It's just experiment, right? You following me? You following me? Yeah, yeah they were kind of important, I think. They, they helped it be less flat. <laughs> okay, yeah, never mind. I like them. 
Alrighty, while we're on the topic of kind of sprucing up this middle section a little bit, I want to start thinking about some connectors between some of these buildings. One of the things that I love to see in tight-knit communities like this, besides for, you know, the roads and the general villagers meeting, it's always fun, I like to hang banners and lights all around this area, and I think that would be really fun to do. Oh, look how happy the villagers are! Oh, I love them. Hi, Pierre. You got it. That's it. They're making their little happy noises gathering all around the tree. It just makes my heart happy. They're all so sweet. Hi, Athena. Okay, so what I'm talking about with these connectors is like little kind of ropes hanging in various areas. Obviously, in Minecraft, we don't actually have access to ropes, really. But we can kind of simulate that with these fences. So I'm going to attach some right here and kind of string this over, <laughs> sort of. Excuse me, villagers, don't mind me. Just the crazy lady of the village. Like, would that look crazy? I don't feel like that would look crazy. I feel like it would look nice. And then we can, in certain spots, have lights hanging and we can have banners on these lights. It's definitely very cute. I think I like it. <laughs> I want to do it between the buildings as well. Like these buildings here, there could totally be one right here. Hang on. Sorry, Barbara. I know you're very concerned about what's going on. I have it all under control. Don't worry. Okay. Um, this one will come this way. Right? So just a little connector right there. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. And it's going to help us light everything up. Obviously, these don't do a ton for the ground, but... Just giving the illusion of some overhead lighting and decoration. I enjoy this. Okay, the next thing that I'd like to start thinking about is potentially maybe some banner designs for the village. And we have a loom now, so this is something that we can definitely work on. Not overly important for defending a castle, but very important for our perseverance in battle, of course. Hello, Shepard. You're so adorable. <laughs> okay, so... I should make a crafting table in here. How do I not have a craft? Hello? Is there a crafting table up here? There we go. So I'm gonna start us out with a red banner because red is the color that we're going with for the flags. However, I would like to kind of reference maybe dandelions and that sort of theme in this. Um, so we're gonna go with a design that has some yellow in it. For that, we are definitely going to need a whole bunch of dye. So it's time to go flower picking. I need yellow dye, which I see over here, and some pink dye, which I don't see, but we can work on. I absolutely love the whole idea that you can customize these banners in survival mode. Oh, we will need a daisy, so that's super important. I think the banners are going to really make this entire thing just stand out so much more. All I need now is a little bit of bone meal. Okay, perfect. Now this becomes white dye. This becomes red dye. That becomes yellow and that's orange. Okay, I think that's everything that we need in order to make a banner. Also, I know I haven't done this yet, but look at how cool this is gonna look if we can have banners on it. I don't have enough wool at the minute. We need to uh, work on expanding our sheep farm, but that'd be so cool. Oh, banner patterns. I totally forgot the banner patterns exist. <laughs> I need a piece of paper, my bad. I'm really poorly prepared for this banner designing today, but I just, I don't do this very often, okay? Okay, so if I combine a moon daisy with a paper, we get a banner pattern. This is the pattern that I am wanting for the lovely village design. I'm going with a dandelion inspired design because of Dandelion Hill. I just feel like it'll really bring the whole place together. Okay, so now to start, I'm going to want a straight line with my red, right? And then I'm gonna wanna use my red dye to kind of blur out part of that line by using, I need the half one, this one right here. So that gives us our flower's stem. Then I'm gonna use a tiny bit of orange dye for a dot in the center just to add some color and some yellow. Oh wait, no, 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 not yet, not yet. I want pink, pink. Okay, little bit of pink for a lovely gradient, I think. Yeah, that'll be perfect. <laughs> Let me put my dot back. And then the final touch is a bit of yellow and my oxide daisy. Oh, look at that. It's so cute, isn't it? 
<laughs> it's gonna be perfect for us. All right, all I gotta do now is feed these sheep and hopefully get a bunch of babies to dye some red. Using this new supply of red dye, I can make a whole bunch of red banners. And with these, I can simply copy them and then I'll have tons of these banners eventually, over time. Um, not right now. <laughs> and we can use these banners to decorate various areas of the entire village. Don't have a ton right now and I'm gonna keep one on hand always, but eventually we can decorate our shields. And of course the outside gate out here could totally use some, maybe on either side. Wait, that's so pretty. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. For now, I'm gonna keep this one right here on hand so that I can always keep it and copy it whenever I need. Not gonna lie, I do think it is about time, now that we're using wool, to actually create an area for my sheep. <laughs> I feel like, you know, maybe they would appreciate that. Maybe. Um, how about we pick out an area for them? Maybe like this area back here? Not gonna lie, there's an indent in the floor out here that is driving me insane, so I'm literally gonna fill in this whole <laughs> this whole thing uh, I know it's hardcore but this is just how I am we're about to do some hardcore terraforming just kidding this is pretty easy terraforming actually we're literally just filling in a hole but it must be done either way I'm not really interested in this being like a whole massive barn setup I just sort of want a little bit of a roof over their head and an area to kind of section them out by color so let's just start right about here Okay, this is three sections of five by five in each section, and I honestly think this is gonna be good enough. One, two, three, four, five high will do the trick, and then we'll get just a simple slab roof over it, shove some fences in there for a wall, and this will be perfect. Alrighty, it ain't much, but it's a lot better than the random piece of fence on the hill. <laughs> I feel like this will help open up the world a little bit more and we can eventually build a barn and a stables as well, perhaps on the other side where we actually have our farming stuff. Because this is a sheep pen and above ground sheep pens tend not to be the prettiest, I figure this is probably a good solution. Come on sheep, come on, that's it, into your new home, that's it. Perfect, wonderful. Now, all I gotta do is get these shapes to make some babies. And of course, we can finally destroy this old fence. Gosh, we are making so much progress again today in this episode. Although I feel like I've jumped around quite a lot. Apologies for that. Honestly, it always surprises me how easy it is for me to just completely derail an episode. Like we were mining. And then I had an idea to heal my villagers because one of them took damage. And then in order to do that, I needed to move the bell. And in order to move the bell, I needed to build a tree. And then in order to build a tree, I needed to decorate. And in order to decorate, I needed banners. But for banners, you need wool, so we needed a sheep area. And now we're, we're here and I still haven't done anything to protect my, my villagers. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Jeez. To be honest, I'm not sure what the best way to do this is because if we put a dispenser, facing upwards in the ground like that. It'll work, but the splash potion will kind of go straight up and have to fall back down and villagers move fairly quickly, so they might miss it. I'm thinking I'd like to have a couple of dispensers in the walls like so. These dispensers will be speed potion dispensers. So if my villagers are running home, for example, to the inn, they'll be able to have a chance at picking up a little bit of speed along the way which hopefully will increase their chances of survival that's just that's my thought on the matter now it also means that there's going to be quite a lot of speed potion wastage going around but uh that's just part of the job to be honest that's fine and in theory that should work i just need a villager to test that the speed potion actually works on them hey pierre you want to go test out that pressure plate for me yeah like right right here right over here test it out okay for real though i'm gonna start thinking about the healing ones this one is gonna be a healing station and i think i'm literally just gonna put it right here so it should splash out around this area i'm thinking this rings the i didn't mean to ring the bell i'm sorry oh i've induced panic oh i'm sorry it's a false alarm oh but that works ha, look at him go <laughs> All right, I think I've decided what I'm gonna do and I think I'm just gonna put them like this because 
the healing ones are not meant for an emergency. They're meant for when the villagers come around and have their meetings. Which means, in theory, it doesn't really matter how long it takes for the potion to fall back down, right? It, it doesn't matter because the villagers stand around here for a good amount of time in a day. <gasps> it's nearing meeting time! Yes, 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 everybody! Go to your meetings! Why do you take this path? Why not a different... I made stairs. Okay. Step on the pressure plate, please. And we observe the villagers and wait. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> we healed the tree. Um, okay, so that's not going to work. Just note to self that... Oh. <laughs> We're fast. Okay, I'm going to remove the speed for now because y'all are getting a little uh, happy with that, okay? We're a little too ham. I think an easier thing would just be something like this. Yeah, that works way better. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. Okay, so what we're going to do instead is just set them up like that. I think that is way, it makes way more sense. We'll just have to find a good way to hide them. That's all. Be easy. Not sure if this is a great long-term solution, but we'll figure out some sort of maybe lamppost design where we can hide dispensers like we did out with the farm. That'll kind of help the villagers actually heal. And with that, everyone, I think that is all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. It has been absolutely lovely to play in this world today. Definitely needed the relaxation time. I love the changes that we've done to the village so far. It's a really coming to life. Thank you so much for all of your support on this series, and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.